Thank you, Bruce. I like getting back to UND whenever I possibly can. Uh, it's like second home here to me, so um, it's really fun being back up here. Uh, what I'd like to do is uh, just start off talking about the research expense credit, uh, talk about how you can qualify for the credit, uh, who can actually take the credit, but also um, I want to talk about some of the, uh, the more innovative aspects of the credit because it, it went uh, through quite a few changes back in the 2007 legislative session. I do want to make some interesting points about that. To qualify for the state research expense credit, uh, one has to, of course, conduct research in North Dakota. Uh, as Scott mentioned, the credit is basically piggybacked on the federal credit, so all the definitions that Scott was talking about really do apply to the state credit as well. Um, that's why it made so much sense for, for me to follow up because you really did a lot of the, the heavy lifting for it. Essentially, the state credit just references the uh, section of the Revenue Code, IRC Section 41 that Scott mentioned. And so all of the definitions, all of that basically refer directly um, to the Internal Revenue Code. So the key is the research just has to occur in North Dakota. That's really what we're looking at is that it truly is occurring here in the state and incenting um, new research and new activity here in North Dakota. So one of the things to take away is that if you qualify for the federal credit, you're essentially qualifying for it in North Dakota, as long as, it's, as long as the activity is actually taking place here. As Scott mentioned, um, the credit, at least on the federal level, has been available to um, C-Corps, pass-throughs, you name it, uh, sole proprietorships, up until 2007, only C-Corps could take this credit. Uh, as I mentioned, a lot of changes happened in 2007. Now the state credit is available to individuals, states, trusts, um, C-Corps, so it really um, is now more closely mirrored to the federal credit, and it's um, opened up the audience quite a bit. So we are seeing more utilization of this credit because you can see the, the pass-through entities are able to use this. So, so we are actually seeing that this credit is starting to be utilized um, and really achieving its goal. The credit in uh, North Dakota is equal to 25% of the allowable expenses. And again, uh, Scott went through most of, uh, really went through those very well. Again, we just mirror the federal definition of allowable expenses. And it's, uh, essentially, um, the, this is the first tier. Uh, in 2007, before the law changed, it wasn't a 25% credit, but it was essentially an 8% credit um, on the first $1.5 million and 4% on anything above and beyond $1.5 million of allowable expenditures. But what happened was in 2007, the law was changed to an extent to, to um, increase that top rate to 25%, but focus more on the, the earlier dollars, the first $100,000. And this is essentially the first tier in computing the state credit. I apologize, there's a lot of stuff up here on the screen and you probably can't see it in your handouts, but um, this is that first tier I was talking about. Uh, the credit is, again, 25% of the first $100,000 of qualified expenditures. Um, again, before, before 2007, it was 8% and in a 4% tier after that. Now I'll focus on um, these two bars right here. Essentially what this says is the second tier is anything above $100,000 is subject to, um, if you first claim the credit in 2007 through 2010, the neck, anything above $100,000 is subject to 20% rate. So again, they, um, the legislature shortened up these tiers and made it more um, appealing to the, to the earlier dollars that are put into research in North Dakota instead of having such wide tiers. And essentially what happened is when this, um, when the legislature increased this rate, it is really one of the highest uh, credit rates in the nation for research credit. Um, it really was uh, appealing for new research occurring in North Dakota, new companies doing research that had never claimed the credit before, and it made it much more appealing. And we are seeing the utilization of this credit increasing, but at the same time, we like to do things like this to, uh, to promote the credit because we, um, as Scott mentioned, a lot of people don't realize that um, you're even eligible. And especially when you have this kind of a rate, 25% rate on the first $100,000, and above that you have a 20% rate, um, that's quite, um, it's, it's one of the higher rates that we do have on credit. Now what happened is uh, 
the legislature basically escalated this rate so it will always have this 25% on the first $100,000. But after 2016, it drops back down to eight. Now the legislature may choose to change that again, but essentially um, increase this rate for a certain period of time to try accelerate research activity in the state. Now Scott mentioned um, S corps pass throughs, um, of course, pass through the um, individual owner. Um, North Dakota is unique where we have actually one of the lowest individual income tax rates in the nation. So sometimes it's actually tough to utilize the credit because not everybody has uh, that high of an income tax liability. But I'll I'll cover an interesting aspect of that in a little bit. Uh, the amount of the credit, uh, if you can't use the credit, it can be carried back three years, or it can be carried forward 15 years. And just to put that in perspective, that's one of the longer carry forwards that we do have on the books. Um, the only longer one for North Dakota would be the renewable energy um, investment credit, which is 20 years. So this does have a fairly um, lucrative carry forward scheme to allow you to actually utilize these credits if you don't have a liability right up front. And uh, Scott actually mentioned this earlier in that we actually this is a fairly innovative aspect of this credit in that you can actually transfer and monetize this credit if you um, aren't able to utilize it. If you, again, this is focused towards some of the smaller uh, companies doing research, but if you are, you can assign or transfer up to $100,000 of this credit if you are certified by the North Dakota Department of Commerce as a qualified research uh, and development company. Essentially what that means is you're, um, defining code as a qualified research and development company is a company that um, does less than $750,000 worth of gross revenue in a year and also um, did not claim this credit before 2007. So it's focused towards either a new company or a company that's now doing um, research and wasn't before, never claimed the credit, and, um, and um, really focused towards the smaller companies because of the $750,000 limit. But this is unique because it is the only transferable tax, uh, actual tax credit on, on the books right now. There, there used to be more, but this is the one that has stuck around, and it is an innovative um, aspect to this tax credit. Actually, the uh, the carry forward and the carry back would um, stay in place as it's earned. So if you did not if you um, did not sell the credit, and uh, there were still 12 years left on the carry forward, say, it would only apply that only the 12 years would carry with the sale. So you wouldn't it doesn't start over. The, the carry forward wouldn't necessarily start over. From what I understand, when I talk to our, our audit staff, but I don't believe it would carry forward. Can you briefly outline the mechanics of how that sale would take place? Mm -hmm. What's interesting is some states would have. Um, some states actually have brokers that would, as you know, would, uh, would actually work with that sale since that's, this is the only transferable credit. Uh, basically, you have to apply to the state tax department. The seller has to get certified by the Department of Commerce. Um, they'd have to approach the department, get certified, and once they'd be certified, they can actually, um, they, it's up to them to find a purchaser. Uh, the seller of the credit would apply to the uh, state tax department and also the purchaser. And it's only allowed to be transferred once. That's the other thing is it can't be transferred over and over and over. But um, they essentially have to both contact the department and there's just some simple forms that they'd have to go through. But um, it's basically through, you start off with the commerce department and then the purchaser and the seller have to fill out a form with our tax department. With the seller or the, uh, the buyer? Well, th this is actually a requirement um, to, for the seller, for the research and development company. Right. They have to be certified, but the buyer, there wouldn't be the restriction. They would just essentially have to um, have that liability and really have to have that uh, capacity to purchase the credit. 